much for being here. My name is Stephanie Villarreal. I am the Human Resources Director. I've been a part of the ARC family for 10 years now and five in my current role. Throughout my tenure here, I've received so many wonderful opportunities and it's really a great blessing to be a part of this greater organization. I um, have a master's degree in business administration with a concentration in HR and prior to working here, I held um, several administrative positions and some supervisor roles in the retail industry. And I also helped my husband start up his business um, before he was my husband, when he was my fiance, so that was a lot of work and um, wore a lot of different hats there. <laughs> um, but on a personal note, I am from Phoenix, Arizona, but raised here in San Antonio. We moved here when I was about three years old, so you can say I'm from here. <laughs> um, like I said, I am married. I've been married for eight years now, um, but have been with my husband since I was 18, so 14 years in total. Now you can guess my age. <laughs> Um, we don't have any kids, but we do have two dogs. Um, I'm, I'm a crazy dog mom, I have to admit. <laughs> um, they're both cane corsos. My boy is six years old. He's 140 pounds, so he's a big boy. And then my girl, she's um, three months and already weighing 41 pounds. So they're a handful. <laughs> but why we're here today is to talk about HR. So just an agenda for you. Today I'm going to introduce you to my team and talk to you about the HR focus. I'm gonna share a little bit about employee demographics and then give you an overview of the HR functions and also highlight some uh, resident sponsored benefits as we go through. Um, and then at the end, we'll have an opportunity for questions if you have any, if you don't, that's okay too. So my team, um, I'd like to start off with Ashton McKennis. She is the HR generalist. <laughs> Ashton has been a part of my team for five years now. She has a bachelor's degree in business administration with a concentration in HR. She has 10 years of experience in HR and um, was part of the Air Force Reserves. She uh, focuses on recruitment, onboarding, work-related injuries, uh, the wellness program, and employee relations. And our second employee is Yahaira Padilla. Unfortunately, she's not here this morning. She was um, feeling a little sick, but she's our newest employee. She's been with us for one year. She also has a bachelor's degree in HR management. She has over 10 years of experience, administrative experience. Um, she does have a army family. Um, she was born in, born in Germany and um, was stationed in many different locations throughout her childhood. Her focus is uh, benefit administration, FMLA, leave of absence, HRIS data entry, and upkeep. And then last but definitely not least, uh, Ruth Segovia. She is our HR <laughs> Ruth has been with us for 10 years. Um, she's been my partner in crime. We started the same day and um, um, we're so, so fortunate to have her here. She's been with, she has 18 years of experience in customer service and her focus is safeguarding and um, keeping track of employee documentation and um, also administrative support and customer service. So together as a team, our goal is to recruit, hire, train, and support skilled and dedicated employees. So although we don't get to serve you directly, we do uh, play a very important role in bringing the employees that provide the direct service to you. We also continually evaluate employment compensation, benefits, and policies to ensure we retain the best employees. And uh, we strive to provide stability and consistency in the services we deliver. I wanted to talk a little bit about our workplace culture. Uh, we are service oriented, so that means it's we're focused on providing the best service to you. Um, and we try to go above and beyond to ensure resident satisfaction. But I also see a very family oriented or caring culture where we take care of each other, where we care about each other. Um, and that goes from employees to residents, residents to employees, and employees to employees. So I think it really makes it a special place to work. Um, our employee motto is caring for others the way I would like others to care for me or my loved ones, which I think is some, something that you know everybody can really relate to. We all have a parent, a grandparent, so um, I think our employees really do follow through with that. Um, I wanted to 
to share with you a, a little graph I pulled from our We Care Connect survey, because it's one thing for me to tell you the information, but this is what the employees are actually saying. Um, so, have you felt welcome up to this point? 100% of our new hires said yes. Do you feel appreciated for the job you do? 100% of our new hires also said yes. So, I think that it's really neat to see those numbers. Um, I also wanted to add a couple of comments that they left. So the question is, what, what do you like the most about working for us? The employees responded, the residents, they are all very sweet, the employees are treated well. The people, the residents, and the joy it brings me to, to be serving our veterans. The environment and the work ethic. It's the work environment that I like the most about the ARC. Great attitude among all levels of staff and their different departments. As you can see, this is truly a special place to work. Um, I also wanted to read this specific comment left. Um, when they call themselves the ARC family, they truly mean it. All my encounters with supervisors, employees, directors, I say have been great. The team I'm a part of is exceptional and I couldn't dream of a better team to be a part of. So that's directly from our employees. I wanted to share a little bit of our about our employee demographics. Our average employee count right now is 374. That consists of full-time, part-time, and full employees. Most of our employees are full-time with about 340 being full-time, about 25 part-time, and then we have a couple of pool in our healthcare area, um, and they just work as needed. The largest departments are healthcare and dining services with about 100 employees each and the smallest departments are development, um, <laughs> HR, and IT. HR and IT have four, and development. <laughs> Our average employee age is 48, and the average employee tenure is six years. Um, if we exclude the first year, it actually brings it up to eight years. And um, some really cool numbers that I thought I would share. We have 164 employees that have been with us for over five years. 110 of those employees have been with us for over 10 years, and 59 of our employees have been with us for over 15 years. So we have great longevity amongst our coworkers. Um, the longest tenured employees, we actually have two that have already met um, this milestone. It's 37 years, and they're both in housekeeping. So kudos to Ms. Alida over there. <laughs> Um, we're also very lucky to have a very diverse workforce. We are represented by 14 different countries, Colombia, Cuba, El Salvador, England, Guatemala, Honduras, um, you know, the rest are up here, and the primary <laughs> languages are English, Spanish, Tagalog, and Thai. So now to talk a little bit about what we do in HR. We do cover the full employment cycle from beginning of employment during employment all the way to the end of employment. And I'm gonna go and go through just some of our job functions and hopefully try to explain um, this in, in a little bit more detail. So we start off with job establishment, determining if it's a vacancy or a new position. For the most part, we have our, our positions in place, but sometimes due to service changes or to restructuring, we do have to uh, create new positions. We uh, post all our jobs internally and externally. We try to give opportunity as much as we can for our employees to get promoted from within if, if able to. Um, so you'll probably see a lot of these promotion pictures on Facebook and throughout the community because we really, uh, we really <coughs> try to promote within when we can. And we have a total of 13 promotions this year from within. My team also takes care of recruitment. So that's job posting um, and assisting with applicant screenings, interviews, and then job offers once the hiring manager is ready to select. Um, and then we move on to the candidate pre-employment screening. This is where we run the criminal background check, drug screen, license verification, EMR checks, MVR checks. Um, so as you can see, we're, we make sure that everyone is, is safe and fully um, covered. And we also run most of these annually. I'm very happy to announce that right now we have a 4% vacancy rate, so it's very minimal uh, jobs that we have open. Um, and I <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, so as Mr. Fuller said, the in industry norm is about 25. So we're doing amazing. Um, and I just want to thank my team because they're a big part of that too, the leadership team and my HR team. Um, in housekeeping, we only have one vacancy right now, which is amazing. Healthcare, we have about four vacancies. So we're doing really, really good. Um, we also take care of external volunteers and interns. Once we pass the uh, pre-employment stage, then we go into onboarding. During onboarding, we do we start off with in-processing. This is where a new hire gets a introduction to the organization. We review our policies, benefits, and they sign required documentation. After we, they've been with us for a couple of um, weeks, then we pass that along to the NEO, where it's, it's a more in detail orientation where they learn about the history, the culture, they get to meet our director team, and um, they get a benefit refresher and a tour of the facility. They really enjoy the tour of the facility. A lot of the times our nurses don't get to see our beautiful dining room or our sky lounge, so it always amazes them how, um, how beautiful our facility is, and I think it just makes them super proud to be here as well. Employment, we do cover the training. So most of the training is covered through monthly all staff meetings. These are designed to help bring coworkers together, but we also cover required mandatory trainings. So um, such as the workplace violence, infection control, but occasionally we also do uh, trainings that are beneficial to the employees. Like Colonel Crafty re recently presented on, um, on directives and that was super helpful. And during these meetings, we also celebrate success stories. We take advantage that all the team is together to really celebrate everything that is going on, like promotions, bright ideas, graduations, marriage, um, anything that, that we can share with the team. Um, so here at the bottom, you'll see a picture where the uh, Bersh County, I'm sorry, I can't talk. <laughs> the sheriff um, came and presented on workplace violence. Um, and then if employees don't attend these meetings, they are required to do a mandatory makeup. And these are through the Relias learning, ma learning Management System. And um, with this system, we also cover trainings that are specific for each department. In addition, each department has new hire trainings in place specific to their areas, and my team supports as needed. And we also support the internal CNA school, which just recently we had six graduates, so we're, we're really proud of that. Uh, to continue with employment, we work very closely with our finance department, um, with payroll administration. So we do all the initial entries in the system. We do the pay status changes, the benefit entries, wage garnishments. And then we continue with any employment verifications that come in, any address changes and W-4s. We then also um, do the benefit reviews. So we review and analyze employee benefits yearly. We cover medical, well, we support the medical, dental, vision, life, supplemental insurances, 403B retirement, memberships, um, and the wellness program. Throughout the year, we provide information and try to answer as many questions as we can that our employees might have. And we cover the new hire enrollment. So as they're getting ready to make the elections, we support that as well. Um, each year we have our open enrollment, which is actually coming up in October. This is where employees get the opportunity to change their elections or to enroll for different things. Um, the plan starts 12-1, so we do that ahead of time. We also have annual retirement plan and education meetings. Now I wanted to touch a little bit on um, some very impactful um, resident sponsored benefits, which many of you have probably heard of the Smith Fund. This is a way of you all to express gratitude to our employees since we're not able to do tips. And um, it's given out in two different bonuses. The thank you bonus is around May, June area, and it's based on employee tenure. It's between 25 and $90. And then the Christmas bonus is in December, and it's based on hours worked. Uh, the last year, the average check was 1224 And this is just super impactful to our employees. Many employees, you know, they use this to purchase their gifts for their kids, to catch up on payments, to take a small family trip for an employee that 
you know, may make $14, $15 an hour. This is super helpful. And we just, from the bottom of my heart, really thank you all for contributing to this. If you're interested in contributing or making any changes, Anna and Emily will be happy to assist you with that. I also wanted to talk a little bit about the Kiwana Scholarship, which is another resident-sponsored benefit that is very helpful and impactful to our employees in supporting them and their dependents and continuing their education. It's offered twice a year. This year, uh, we, we gave out a total of 41 scholarships and 21 in this fall semester. So these students are the ones that received it. Um, you may recognize a couple of these faces here. And then the Employee Assistance Fund is another benefit that's really supported by our residents. Um, we recognize that sometimes employees go through unavoidable crises or catastrophic situations and they really need our help and support. And this is meant to, to help employees in these situations. Uh, to be eligible, they have to be part-time or full-time and they have to work with us for at least one year. Um, they have to submit it in writing along with documentation of whatever their situation is and a committee reviews and then they vote um, if it's approved or not. These checks are usually issued, we have five days to issue them, but we usually issue within 48 hours. So it's another great way of uh, assisting and supporting our employees. And also if, if you're interested in supporting this cause, you can get with Emily or Anna. I'll be happy to help. To continue with the HR functions, uh, we also handle leave administration, so FMLA, leave of absence, and offering resources and supports, support while our employees are out um, during these times. And we support our directors with counseling um, if they have any issues going on with their staff or if employees want to come in and talk to HR about any issues they might have with coworkers or supervisors. We track uh, performance management, so any annual evaluations or 90-day evaluations are, keep, are kept track by the HR team. And then we also handle employee grievances and complaints. So if there's an issue that needs to be addressed, we um, take that very seriously and respond as soon as possible by investigating and trying to address the issue. We also really focus on retention. So I'm gonna go over a few of the different events that we have throughout the year for uh, retention, but something I really encourage you to do or ask you to assist with is kudos letters or comment letters. I think that's always a nice way to really motivate employees. Those go into their um, file and they get to see that, they get to share with their director. So I really encourage you if you can to to provide kudos letters or comment cards if, if an employee is doing well. We're very lucky that we've been able to maintain our turnover at 38% for the fiscal year. Our goal is always to keep it under 40, which compared to the industry, we see numbers as, at 60, 65, 70%. So we're really doing a great job with keeping our employees and making sure they're happy. So I wanted to touch a little bit about our events that we do throughout the year. Um, some of our biggest events are employee recognition events. These are um, held biannually in June and in December. It's where we celebrate years of service milestones in the presence of all the coworkers and leadership team. And um, we thank the employees for the loyalty and commitment to the art. We celebrate in five year increments. So from five all the way to 35 years, each employee gets a certificate, a pin and a check. And we had, um, a total of 50 employees that were going to be recognized this year. Here's a picture of Robert Cook. He um, met his 35 year milestone in December. And then Tongsi Joyce, we recognized her also for her 35 years in June. Here's a picture of the nice pin they received. We try to make it fun for the employees. You know, usually it's, it's all about work, but we try to make a day or two that's fun and, and enjoyable for the employees. So. Um, we have a recognition committee that really focuses on planning and coordinating the event. Um, we have different themes and it's usually a great lunch, dessert, games and raffles. This is our last event that we had. It was a 70s disco theme. You might see some familiar faces there. <laughs> we also do um, department appreciation days. 
specifically to the different departments. We do a little breakfast or lunch just to thank them for the individual contributions because every department plays an important role in the ARC success. So here's a couple of pictures where we celebrated the different departments. And then other events we have throughout the year. Um, in March, we celebrate National Employee Appreciation Day. So like this year, we brought out the massage chairs and employees got to enjoy a little 10 minute massage and they really like that. <laughs> we also have the cowboy breakfast, fiesta lunch and annual walks throughout the year. And then to the not so fun part, <laughs> we also take care of resignations, retirements and terminations. Um, we don't want anybody to leave, but sometimes it happens. Um, so we take care of out processing, exit interviews, and then we're the continued support for that employee that leaves the ARC. Um, we're the point of contact to assist with verification, benefit continuation, retirement fund distributions, or anything else they might need help with. And then we also respond to unemployment claims. Throughout the employee cycle, we um, also take care of risk management, so addressing and preventing potential lawsuits, supervising disciplines and firing practices, staying up to date with labor laws and requirements, and protecting the organization's data. And we also take care of annual reporting, so like EEO1 component, OSHA 300 injuries report, and the 5500. <coughs> So that is a little summary of all the HR job functions. Um, I, I hope you learned a little bit about HR today. And um, like I said, although we don't provide a direct service to you, we're very proud to be able to support the employees and the leadership team that does support you directly. So thank you so much and I'll open it up for any questions you might have. You know, we have a lot of our employees that start off in dining services, and this might be just a stepping stone for them. And although we do offer opportunities, you know, it's a lot of employees, so sometimes they want to move to a different career or, you know, focus on school. So I would say for another job, but um, like I said, we try to offer as many opportunities as we can from within. Yes, sir. Are the Queen State's employees included in Smith Point? No, sir. Hey Stephanie, how about covering for everybody uh, the confidential nature of termination? What the rules are for termination and sharing it with the Yes, residents, yes sir. So, I mean, we are responsible for keeping, um, the, for being um, the gatekeepers of employee information. And it's very important for us to safeguard all the files and all of that, but also as you're leaving, um, we, we can't share any information um, to be respectful to them and to to really follow the guidelines um, and the labor laws. Yes, sir. Who handles the exit interviews? My team does. Do they have the CEO? No, they're, they're handled by me, sir. So he asked who handled exit interviews and my team handles those. Any other questions you might have? Yes, sir. In regard to training of employees when you when you hire them, are they made aware of the uh, senior population they'll be servicing so that they can be aware of some of our limitations? Yes, sir. That's covered during the new hire and processing. Could you describe some of the uh, the aspects of that training? So yeah, so we just um, review our industry and who we're serving in detail and what comes with serving um, our seniors. So we do our best to, to inform the employees before they start. Yes, sir. Uh, some of the high schools offer their seniors a half a day to go out and work and whatnot. Do you have a program by which you can interface with some of the uh, local high schools who have a program such as that that you can hire them on as perhaps training for their uh, 
future life after graduation from high school? Yeah, so one of our focuses right now is community engagement and how we um, increase our educational partnerships. And um, we're actually right now with, uh, talking to one of the high schools about their CNA program and how they can come and do their clinicals here. So we, you, we'll see more of that to come. We also work with Baylor. So we have several interns here that work with our um, healthcare department. So, and we're continuing that as well. Um, we look to partner with the social work program to uh, provide internships. Yes, ma'am. So who does the training for the health care people who are perhaps in memory care, which requires special skills? Who is in there doing that training? Yeah, so since that's specific to their department, it, it, in, in specific to healthcare, it would be Enrique. Um, but we also really use the Reliance Learning Management System. They they offer a lot of courses specific to healthcare. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Stephanie, you covered several acronyms in your presentation, like FMLA and a few others. Can you translate a few of those for us, especially starting with FMLA? Sure, that's Family Medical Leave Act. And that's still a benefit that we have our employees for our employees when they've been with us for at least a year and have met the requirements. And that protects their job when they have to be out for a medical need or um, maybe an incident that they have. Also, if they need to take care of their parents if they're the primary care provider. Um, and it really protects their job for at least um, three months or 12 weeks, depending on what the doctor's certification says. We do require that uh, to be provided from the doctor so that we can follow that through. Any other one? Good. I'm trying to think of any other acronyms. Leave of absence is when they don't qualify for FMLA. We also try to be flexible with our employees and we understand things happen. So that's um, for employees that don't qualify for FMLA. Um, and we, those are a little bit more short term, so we cover their or protect their job for about a month if they have to be out. I think there were a few others under um, employee verification, DMV. So, yeah, so the, the criminal background checks, we do national and county, we do the, the MBRs or the motor vehicle record checks. Um, I'm trying to think what else. <laughs> We check the licenses and everything. Employee misconduct record is another one. Yes, sir. Yeah, do you have a, a program to acknowledge uh, things like weddings or anniversaries or births, that type of thing for your employees? To celebrate them? Yeah. So if, if they're open to sharing with us and sharing with the team, then we try to celebrate those during our monthly staff meetings when we're all together. Um, it's based on the employee if they want to share that with the whole team, but wherever possible we try to share all success stories and anything that the employee might be happy sharing. What was Mrs. Wellness program? Yes, um, so we do have a wellness program that provides or um, encourages and rewards employees for staying active. So by walking and maybe doing the you know, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I went blind, but if they walk a lot or if they do um, a dental check, they get points for that. So as they earn the points, then they get gift cards. Um, so that's a way of us keeping employees um, happy and healthy. Yes, ma'am. The residents could use something like that. Um, okay. I'll tell that to Debbie. <laughs> The residents can use something like that, Debbie. <laughs> yeah, so it's been super helpful for us. Our employees are really engaged and active, and it's helped us really reduce our um, benefit renewal rates just based on how much engagement we have on that. Yes, and we, we throughout the program, so we do biometric screening, so it's quick little checkups for the employees that we do here internally. 
and sometimes they by doing that they've noticed that they have diabetes or high blood pressure and they're able to follow up and get that um, treated by their doctor. Yeah, so we have a great benefit package, I would say. Like I mentioned, we, we have a medical, dental, vision, life plan. We offer um, supplemental plans through AFLAC. We have the wellness program. And then we also include, you know, the vacation and the holiday pay. We have jury duty. So we try to really cover everything to make it a really rich program for our employees. Yes, sir. In that regard, are our employees being compensated in, a, in, re, in relationship to the local economy? Yes, sir. So we review compensation annually, and we're doing what we can to stay on board. Um, you know, it's very competitive out there, especially with the hospitals and different locations, but uh, we're doing what we can to stay competitive and and keep our rates um, fair for our employees. Yeah, Ralph, uh, on the board, I, I think, see what the last three or four years we've raised the, the pay for employees. That's, that's, that's a board function. And so we, uh, we voted that in just, in fact, recently in June, a slight bump, you know, 25 cents here, 30, you know, Yes, yeah, so we do the annual increases. Annually increases, we mm -hmm. do that. So if you want to hire someone directly, we do ask that you go through us so that we run the background check and make sure everything is clear through them. Our contractors are a little bit different. Yes, sir. So you've got 374 employees. Uh, who makes the decision on the authorization? How many people are needed in dining services? How many people are needed in IT? Yes, sir. That's reviewed annually during the budget. Um, so every department has this assigned um, different FTEs, and I would say that would be the, the approval of Gordon and the department director if there needs to be any changes. FTEs? Or employees, full time equivalents, but employee counts, I would say. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's my acronym. questions yes ma'am when you were talking about the different uh, areas on the employment and you said dining services and health care mm -hmm. are the two highest ones what about housekeeping they are right behind <laughs> yeah so health care and dining services are the, our biggest departments but uh, I would say housekeeping and residence services follow right after Thank you so much for your time.